Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another film. So, an entirely new location for me this morning. Um, I know this spot in a, in a sense that I've driven over it. Um, there's a motorway that goes over the top of the, the woodland that I'm in, not too far away over to that side. So I, I have looked down on it many times over the years, but um, uh, especially in autumn, it looks beautiful, but I've never actually been here. I wasn't sure if there was an access road to get me close to it, but, uh, but there is. And uh, there was also a footpath that, that runs through it. I'm not sure how much of that footpath will give me access to the full woodland. It may well just come out into the fields at the back there. I have really no idea. Um, I, I'm not a clue what, what just might be around the next corner. Um, everything that you see behind me is completely new to me. Now, the weather, um, you might be able to hear at the moment, the wind is picking up today. There's a forecast of strong winds. Um, we've got some overcast light at the moment, but there's some promise of sunshine um, mixed with uh, in intermixed with um, breaks in the cloud. So I'm going to get a whole mix of overcast light, um, dapple light, I think. And uh, there's even a chance of thunder and lightning and uh, heavy showers. So everything mixed into one session potentially this morning. The one thing that I do know about this location is that it's ancient woodland. The trees don't look particularly old um, that I've seen so far. I would say no more than 100 years or so. But um, it may well just be the fact that it's ancient woodland in that um, the botanical interest uh, is, is indicative of that. I've seen, um, well, there's, there's common, fairly common woodland plants like Herb Robert just here. There's wood havens over there and Enchanter's Nightshade. So botanically, it's quite interesting, but I've no idea what I'm going to shoot today. So I'll get the bag back on and have a little walk around. So the problem with a new location is you've always got that urge to rush through and explore as much of it as you can as quickly as you can and get to see it all in that single outing but um, I'm not going to do that I'm going to take my time I'm going to enjoy it this morning and just in fact where I was just then which is literally just behind me I was tempted to um, have a session just there and just see what I could find in that local vicinity but I at least want to get over the hill and just look at the extent of the woodland behind me and certainly um, from what I can see, even for the next two or three hundred metres, there should be lots to explore and enjoy. There's a nice fall and what looks like a, a big old oak tree just there. Um, this woodland has got bluebells in it as well. So somewhere potentially to come back to uh, early next, uh, next year. The light is looking really quite nice it's um it's quite early at the moment it's 20 past six i got up this morning at uh, quarter past four and this the, this little woodland isn't probably more than half an hour from where i live so nice and easily uh, nice and easy to get to very accessible very quick but anyway like i say i'm not going to rush i'm going to take my time and um i'd like to find a broader scene i always do but uh, it's probably going to be um, something smaller until I get to know the woodland better and I know that the way that the, the, the woodland lies, the landscape lies and the light falls on it um, before I consider any broader views but I'll certainly be keeping my eye out for some nice characters in this woodland if I can find them but um, so far so good, looks really nice, looks really accessible, um, not too dangerous underfoot so yeah enjoy this one. So I've already walked quite a bit further than I fully intended to or expected to this morning and it's a, a sad fact of many woodlands here in the UK in that we have a lot of invasive species and I've mentioned this before on, on, the, on the video on the channel um, in that the woodland, a lot of it that I've found so far is full of this stuff, this Himalayan balsam. And you've got another one here, 
that's, um, that's in flower. And many of you will know that um, when the flowers are finished, the seeds come out and you end up with these pods and these pods are um, almost explosive. They, they eject the seeds over something like three or four meters. And at the back of me here, you'll see this little dip is just filled with the stuff. And not only does it destabilize um, the riverbanks where it likes to grow in wet areas, um, it also sh um, sheds out much of our native woodland plants. So if you, if you look in the immediate foreground, you'll see the bluebells here, the dead stems of the bluebells. And of course, down here, I'm struggling to see any because the Himalayan balsam has just outcompeted it. And it, it's obviously, as you can see, it's clearly creeping its way up further into the woodland. It's, it must be a bit of a damp patch down there. And that's the reason why I've walked more than further than I expected to this morning, because I, I keep coming across these patches and I don't really, um, I was sort of looking for a, a broader scene if I could, but I can't find them because I don't really enjoy showing um, these invasive species in my photographs. I like it to look um, certainly semi-natural as, as much as possible. And of course, as you, if you watch the channel, you know that I like photographing um, botanical studies. And of course, you just get a monoculture of balsam where it, where it occurs and you, there's, there's just literally nothing else to shoot. So I am moving fairly quickly from, from plot to plot within the woodland. Um, I'm going to carry on a little bit through here. There's some nice old oak trees there again. Ordinarily, I'd, I'd be considering whether those would make a woodland landscape shot, but uh, certainly not today. And uh, the, the one thing you can do with these, if you see them, is pull them up and uh, just let them lie flat on the ground. But of course, once the seeds are, are in place, you really ought to not go near them because the minute you touch them, they just pop the seeds and they're all over the place. But having said that, on days like today, when the seeds are out, they knock against each other and uh, they, that's how they disperse. It's, um, it's something that we're, we're probably never going to get, uh, get control of. But uh, certainly for me in my photographs, if I was looking for environmental type studies, environment, environmental impact studies, they, they would certainly make, make for a great photograph, but uh, not, not one for today, perhaps. So no video of mine will ever be complete without finding some poo on an outing. And uh, what a dollop that is. It's enormous. So this, I just, I should tell you, I've been walk, walking up quite a steep track and as I've been coming up the track, um, amongst all the balsam that I talked about a few minutes ago, there was lots of hoof prints in the floor through the balsam and a bit of a track. And this is what's led me to where I am now. Now you, will, you could be forgiven for thinking this is deer poo, but actually it's not, it's badger poo. And um, significantly more slo sloppy in consistency um, to deer poo, um, forgive, forgive the description. But the main giveaway is that it's in a little pit and that's um, very indicative of badger in the wild. No idea, I've not seen any holes where the set might be, but um, this is definitely a, a territorial marker. It's quite, it's quite a pile of dungies that, um, but like I say, in a little pit that's been excavated, you see the excavation here and it's just done its poo. And um, just to let other badgers know, the males probably in the area, that this marks um, potentially a, a boundary of, um, of a, a clan of badgers. So yeah, finally found a piece of poo for the film. So I now find myself on the badger path itself. And uh, I know that because, well, two reasons. There's no public footpath um, or no um, marked footpath in this wood. It's certainly free to roam, there's no fence lines. Um, so I suspect this being a very, very direct and deliberate pathway is what the badgers are using to commute. Now, this log here, dead giveaway, you see the bark on this side and this side and it's completely gone in the middle. And um, obviously badgers have jumped over it and uh, worn 
over the years worn the bark away and on the top here you can see evidence of claw marks where they've just scrambled over. I know it's not deer because deer don't catch things as they go over, they tend to just jump over them very gracefully. So this is definitely the badger path, so I, I could well be coming across a set anytime soon. So I'm heading back from where I uh, originally started the film. Big steep bank behind me that I, I climbed up initially, initially and I've just come back down, <laughs> almost broke my neck. It's so slippery with all the balsam um, on the footpath or pathway or whatever's made it. Um, I got down, if you remember early on in the film, I mentioned the motorway bridge and I got to that uh, place where the wood broadens out and uh, on the bridge stanchions, the, the concrete legs, there was lots and lots of graffiti and I thought, oh, I'm going to have a look and admire some of the artwork whilst I was there. But then I got spooked. Uh, I realised that there was a, a camp very, very close to where I was standing when I turned round and it was a large tent covered in moss uh, and strewn all around it were um, bottles of beer, cans of beer, um, spirits and... Um, vessels full of what looked like home brew to me, um, just discarded food items. It was a real mess. I didn't, I didn't film it, I just decided to get out as quick as I could. Um, it's still quite early and whoever is living there was probably still uh, fast asleep and, I, and A, I don't want to disturb anybody and certainly B, I don't want any conflict. So um, they may well have been surprised to see somebody and, and be concerned that their whereabouts was going to um, be revealed so I thought now let's let's get out so I've come back and I'm heading back to where I originally started I've got all the balsam forest almost behind me I'm going to get through that and, and see what I can find um, further back there where I know that uh, I'm not going to get bothered by anybody but this is the chance you take when you come to a new location you just never know what you're going to find so let's get let's get out of here I'm right back where I started over two hours ago. <laughs> I, should have, I should have done what I originally intended on doing, which was just working a small patch of the woodland. And I got over the hill there and I saw various patches of balsam. I thought, we'll just go a little bit further. And then I thought, I'll just go a little bit further. And it's that trap that we so often fall into. And by doing that, you miss opportunities um, within a much closer distance than, than where you end up walking to. And hopefully I'm going to prove that now because I'm going to spend a little bit of time here relaxing and uh, just absorb the area while I have a drink and something to eat and just see if I can find something just round about where I'm sat now. Hopefully, um, fingers crossed, I'll find something. <sighs> drink. Well, I've finally got two shots. Um, the one that I've got the camera on now being the first and the second one's about 20 yards over in that direction. Now, it's taken about an hour to get these two images um, found simply because since I last spoke to you, it's done nothing but rain. I've been sat on the log sheltering under my umbrella and that's how I came to find this first shot and it's Herb Robert. I mentioned it earlier on this morning along with a couple of other plants that, that are growing here. Now this composition that I've got here is really, really pleasing. I'll get the little video camera on the back now and I'll just talk you through the composition. So first things first, this is the flowering cluster that I'm focused on. And you've got one flowering head and one, two, three little seed pods there. Um, these two leaflets um, that you see are also included within the frame. So I'll just put the video camera on now then you can see the composition. So there's the composition as I've got it lined up. Really pleasing composition, very happy with it. Um, as you can see, I've got these two 
seed pods here, just really nicely anchoring that bottom right hand side of the frame and then it's balanced by the leaflet on the left. And then as you go up you've got this nice jumping from one side to the other where you end up with the flower at the top. Now you could argue that the flower is on the wrong side of the frame um, looking out of the frame. Now I am aware of that but I think overall I think it's really nicely and nicely well balanced with the two seed heads just sharpen those up there. As you can see um, I'm struggling with depth of field. The seed pods are nice and sharp there but the flower isn't and conversely the flower is sharp there but the seed pods aren't. Now there's, a, there's a, a touch of wind that's causing problems with this shot. It's actually quite still there so I'll just take a quick one. Um, that's causing problems. I can't focus stack it because I can't guarantee that I'm going to get everything back in the same place to, to align the frames up so I'm really going for one shot with this and, and there'll be a little bit of compromise, there'll be some softness uh, here and there but where it really matters it will be crucially sharp. Um, in terms of focusing what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the flower because I think that's really important and then focusing back ever so slightly just to try and bring the seed pods in and then I'm hoping that I can get everything in that one frame. Now if you can see I'm on uh, F16 so I'm really stopped down a long way. I'm on 800 ISO to try and make sure I get the, um, the shutter speeds as high as I can but even then you can see it's a quarter of a second so it's very slow indeed so I've got to wait until the plant is absolutely still and not moving at all or certainly to the naked eye doesn't appear to be moving but often uh, when you when you when you review the image you can see actually it is um, a little bit soft and the things that really um, pick that up are the, the, the tiny little hairs on the seed capsules. You can see straight away that the image just isn't sharp. So overall really happy with that shot. Um, so I think yeah I'll put that on now and we'll move on to shot number two. Well you might have guessed it, I'm going to photograph one of my, sub my favourite subjects which is grass and I thought to myself why make life difficult for myself the morning has been reasonably tough already so with such a wonderful subject it made complete sense to have, a, have another go at this. Now this is a, a plant that I've photographed so many times on the channel in the past and it's called tufted hair grass. It gets its name because of the way that the basil leaves um, form at the bottom and they're really quite sharp and tufted when you put your hands on them. Now the technique that I'm going to use you've seen me use before I even used it on my last film which is holding the camera up on live view and just moving the camera around. Now what I particularly like about um, the shot on this occasion is that I've got some highlights coming through the canopy at the back and I'm using those specular highlights to help me frame a composition Never once, even though I've photographed this plant many, many times in the past, never once have I, I, I replicated a shot. It's always different and that's why I love this particular species for photographing. So very, very simple and quick, F4. Um, I'm on manual, manual setting and um, the camera is set at a 30th of a second at 800 ISO because I'm hand holding and the plant is moving around a bit. Now I'm using those highlights as I focus to infinity I can see them they're all distractions and I can't see the actual flowering head at all of the of the grass but as I move around to more the macro setting those highlights start to expand and become bigger and bigger in the background and as that happens I can start to see the pieces of the plant coming into sharp focus so what I'm doing is I'm using a combination of the highlights 
and the in focus flowers to form a composition. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the ones that I've taken on the back of the LCD now, and then I'll put the best one um, on the end of the film just to finish things off. So we'll have a quick look at those now. So this is the start of the frames that I took, and as you can see, it's clearly a voyage of discovery when you're taking images like this. Um, I'll just move the frames along. Uh, now there's the specular highlights that I talked about, and if you look at the last one, you can see that they're, they're actually bigger and smaller on that one. So that's what I was trying to play around with um, to get a composition, and you can just see there, there's some of the flowering heads just coming into sharp focus but the background speckles are, um, are nice and blown out, so not obvious what they are. Um, that one, I suppose, is taking it to the extreme, to the point where you can't really see the flowering heads, you just see the speckles, and, and you can see that there's something in front of them, but it's not clear what. I like things like this because they're quite abstract and they do make you think, but if you bring parts of the flower into sharp focus, it helps the viewer understand what it is that they're looking at. So it's, it's trying to find a compromise between the two, the two ideas, really. Um, I'll just quickly go through a few more. You can see there I've got too much white on one side, so it doesn't feel balanced, and it's dark on the other side. Um, I'm not keen on this big stalk here on the left-hand side. I, I feel it's not overly tidy, although I do like the way that that one is running through that specular highlight. I also like this one now, the little flower just peeks out in the middle there of the speckles, but what I don't like is that it's not a particularly attractive looking flowering part of the plant. So it's really really in the lap of the gods uh, as to how um, you get you arrive at your final frame and uh, it is just a case of taking a lot of images and just hoping for the best to some extent but sticking with it until you get what you like. So I will put the best of the images on now. I've not shown you them all. Um, I want to keep some back for, for when I get to the computer and have a good look at them but uh, you get the general idea so I'll put the best one on now. So I want to interrupt the video just to tell you a little bit about what happened. In the afternoon I went out to do a little bit of extra photography with a friend called David. Now we went to a location that he'd, he'd photographed a particular scene one winter time and he got some beautiful light and some snow and uh, we decided just to have a meet up and go and photograph the scene. Now it's uh, the middle of summer as, as, you, as you full well know and the conditions on the day were pretty ordinary let's say but there was this forecast of thunder uh, and lightning that I mentioned earlier on in the video. So I met up with David, we went to the shot, um, the scene and we, we set up and we had a bit of a chat and we enjoyed framing the composition up and, and just comparing it to what he'd taken previously. And it wasn't long after we'd been there that, that these thunderstorms started to roll in and we decided to hang around to see what effect um, the, the rain, if it, in, if it indeed came along, would have on the scene. And lo and behold, we got an absolute deluge. And I'm just going to show you the picture now that I took um, prior to the deluge, and then I'll show you the one after. Now, the one you see here is pretty ordinary, a pretty summer um, view with lots of uh, lush green vegetation, a nice bit of backlighting coming from behind the back of the trees there. But for all intents and purposes quite an ordinary shot. When you compare that to this shot which is what happened uh, just literally moments later when the heavens opened and you've got this beautiful atmospheric conditions, this light and the exposure for this particular shot was about 
uh, 20 seconds, something like that. So all that rain as it's fallen has been re rendered almost like a mist and it's just transformed the image completely. Now, once we'd finished there, um, there was a break in the clouds, we moved on to, a, to another scene. Uh, we had similar circumstances, but um, I'm not overly um, pleased with that image. It wasn't, the rain wasn't quite as heavy, so um, I'm not gonna put that one on. It's quite an ordinary shot, and there's not a lot to tell between the ordinary summer scene and when we had rain. But we went up further up the hill and we got to the top of um, of the of the sort of the, the valley, the river valley, and um, there was a beech woodland. And I just happened to come across um, a very, very nice dominant um, beech tree that I found with my phone. I put the phone on wide angle and, and I, I lined it up and there was two trees behind it that just lined up beautifully. Now, in the end, I decided to take this as a square crop. And I'll put the image on now and you can see again it's it's a very very typical summer's day a nice composition I have to say and that, that, that strong dominant beach in the foreground looks really beautiful but within about half an hour of being there another one of these storms came through and my goodness was this a storm it absolutely threw it down the pair of us got soaked to the skin we had an umbrella but the leg our legs were absolutely saturated we just got an absolute soaking but my goodness was it worth it just look at this image how it's been transformed by those conditions Well, that was certainly an exciting end to my day and I just had to share that with you. It's just a shame that um, often during normal filming conditions, I just don't get um, situations like that arise during the, the time when I'm out and about making the videos, but um, certainly worth sharing at the back end of this video and what a difference those conditions make between one minute and the next. And it, it's certainly worth bearing in mind if you've got any weather systems moving in and you've got a little location that you know of, go back to it and just just wait and see what the weather provides you with. Right, so I shall pass you back to myself back in the woodland earlier in the day. Well, that's me done for another session. I hope you liked the images. It was nice to come back here and, and work this little area and find some decent shots at last. It was a bit of a wild goose chase this morning and uh, I suspect there'll be many of you thinking to themselves that uh, I'm glad it's not just me that does that. I do it too from time to time, but um, yeah, certain circumstances took over today which led me to walk further than I, I normally would, but uh, that's by the by. It all worked out well in the end and I was happy uh, with those shots that I got. Um, I am going to leave it there and uh, put the images on again in just a second, but if you've enjoyed the video and you want to see more, as always, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell for those notifications and leave some comments below. Let me know what you think of today's images. So until next time, I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye for now.